the Star Wars thing, um, you know, Kathleen Kennedy's kind of an idiot. And yeah. I think it's pretty funny that they're trying to run out this new Star Wars show um, or movie or whatever. Uh, and what does literally all of the marketing say? All of the marketing is women bad men are women good men bad <laughs> right um be inclusive um look at this leslie headland declares people opposed to wokeness are not star wars fans just so people know the the woman in charge of the new star wars series acolyte was harvey weinstein's personal assistant not his oh. not his cousin not the person that delivered his doordash his personal <laughs> assistant meaning she 100% knew everything that was going on. There's literally no question about it. And mm -hmm. she was fine with it. And now she's a, she's producing star Wars shows. I wonder also, why. I, I just think that's so retarded to be able to say, Oh, if you're like this, or if you're like that, then you're not a real fan of star Wars or whatever. It doesn't matter. They could be in jail for thievery or, or murdering an entire family that might make them a bad person, but you can't tell them they're not a star Wars fan because they do any of that. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's not how any of this works. You can't, whether or not you like it does not make it true. You can't like yeah. uh, the idea that, oh, you can't, uh, you can't like Star Wars because you don't like social justice. I mean, they can't know that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, you're not a real Star Wars fan because you're not with my movement. Well, anybody with any type of movement and with any type of ideals can be a fan of a fictional work of art. Uh, you know, it's, their moral standing doesn't dictate if they're a Star Wars fan or not, and especially whenever you've got this backwards mentality of thinking that woke is the moral high ground when it's really rooted in a uh, satanic ideology if you unpack it yeah i think it's funny that they go you know this broad um headland headland's comments came in an interview with the new york times um who maligned star wars fans as misogynists for criticizing the woke dei casting of the show his example a single youtube comment that questions why are there so many women girls and minority characters increasingly increasingly dominating the ranks of the jedi by the way a fine question to ask if you're watching uh, ironically, George Lucas made similar comments when asked if he was going to bring more women into the future of Star Wars. He said, are you going to bring more women into the Star Wars? He responded, well, what of Princess Leia? When you were making a war film, how are you going to put women into it? Think yeah. of the war films. Think of the longest day, those films. You know, women aren't fighting in these wars. Um, then you see, nevertheless, Brooks uses a single question to declare this is a version of the same misogyny and racism that greeted Rey, the female Jedi, played by Disney Five Head Ridley, who made their debut debut in The Force Awakens. Well, Star Wars is just not good anymore, and no. I think that this kind of marketing is very bad. Like it, mm -hmm. it, it makes at a time when Star Wars desperately needs people to come back. Um, yeah. I can't imagine who thought it would be a good idea to run out this old chestnut and say, Hey, did you guys remember that men bad? <laughs> like, yeah. And that's the thing is, is this whole, okay. Oh, star Wars needs more women for what? Just for the sake of women being in it. And, and you can tell with a lot of new movies, TV shows, comic books, this, that, and the other is you keep seeing women shoehorned into stuff just for the sake of it and now that has ruined audience perception whenever they see a trailer and there's a woman in it it's automatically like oh she's just short shoehorned in there that's even my automatic reaction to it as a woman it's like oh this is probably going to suck then because they haven't written women very well in a long time and a lot of these things so you just go to assuming that and that's bad for women in the long run but if they went back to how they used to be with you know think of tomb raider or think of even the vampire movies underworld uh, the first one specifically. sarah connor yeah sarah connor kill bill all this stuff well they actually could write a female character who was cool um who was flawed who wasn't a mary sue um and who worked in some of these action uh action 
films or comics or whatever. Um, but these days it's like female characters are so cringe in a lot of this stuff because they are Mary Sue. They they don't have any flaws or they're overpowering men in situations that is just completely unrealistic. That doesn't make sense. Uh, and yeah, it's just been awful. That's, I mean, that's the reality of it. I mean, if, if what you're describing is exactly why Furiosa tanked. Yep. Furiosa was a Mad Max prequel that nobody wanted and nobody mm -hmm. asked for. That was led by a woman that everybody, a large percentage of people looked at and was like, great. Another strong, independent women who don't need no man story. Even though it didn't really turn out that way. The movie wasn't like woke. She wasn't mm -hmm. punching guys through walls and the movie flopped. And people are like, yeah, but yeah, but it just wasn't a good story. This, that, no, what happened is for the last 10 years, you've pummeled people with terrible female leads. And yep. so now you're going to sacrifice several good movies at the altar um, as you try to um, build trust again, as you try to get people to give you their $20 again. I don't think that it's quite, people talk about the economy and the price of movie tickets. I don't know if that's necessarily it. People have always gone I to the movies. Think it is look at dune part two that just killed it and all there's plenty of movies that are still there's well there's some movies that still do well but I, I don't think that's a good excuse yeah i don't think the economy is because i mean deadpool and wolverine is going to make 700 to 800 million like right. there's there's just no question people will still pay people people will still pay to go see good movies and people will still pay to, for products that are produced by people that they don't feel hate them um, when you have this pedo looking guy or girl um, with uh, saying stuff like uh, things that have blown out of proportion or actions I've had with people have been nothing but wonderful. She's trying to do damage control, um, you know, and talk about how social justice has a part. And you have Kathleen Kennedy um, say storytelling does need to be representative of all people. No, it doesn't. Um, you know, Kathleen Kennedy says women who make Star Wars franchise installments struggle with male fan base why do you think that is you know like is yeah. it possible that men represent a large portion of your fan base and somewhere along the lines you decided that that was a bad thing didn't you if you ever notice this mal is they they used to make you know they make marvel movies they make these action films marvel star wars right Yes, the majority of the fans were men. Not all, but you know, let's say it was 70-30. Right. And I think that's being probably a little extra. It's probably like 75-25 or 80-20 men to women. Yeah. And somewhere along the line, that became known as a problem. And in order to get more women, they made the movies crappier. Like, if you right. notice Marvel, like, what did they do to Marvel movies? They turned them into this goldfish memory joke, 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 just nonstop jokes. Mm -hmm. And there was like, I mean, look at Thor Love and Thunder. It was one of the yeah. biggest piles of crap imaginable, clearly targeted towards women, or they thought it was targeted mm -hmm. towards women. The problem is women did like these movies and yeah. they didn't want it changed either. They liked them the way they were. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't need them. They didn't need a romance movie with a joke every eight seconds. Exactly. That's why that movie flopped. Here's the thing is a lot of women who prefer to watch like a Barbie movie or something, they're not going to be as interested in these action movies, period. It doesn't matter if you try to make them more funny or this or that. Those who are really into more of the rom-com type stuff are probably not going to be into the action genre at all. So if you're trying to appeal to women who already enjoy the action genre, then don't change it into, you know, as someone like myself who loved watching action movies, like I grew up with two brothers, so I like watching a lot of stuff they like to watch, playing video games and this and that. They're not going to bring, uh, they're going to make us check out the, the women who are, the little women who are participating in this genre. If you keep changing it to appeal to the other women who aren't, still aren't going to watch, and you're also going to make women who would have otherwise watched because they liked what the men liked anyway, they were gone too. So they're losing everybody here. And in this case, they want to blame men. But in reality, when you're marketing toward women, 
and the women aren't turning up to watch it, then the fault is who you're marketing to. The, the women aren't supporting it. And that's why it's not doing well. If you want men to support it, then make it appeal to men. So there's so many different ways that you can do that, even with female characters, because that's happened before. But they're just not doing that. And they're focusing so much on these woke ideologies and stuff instead or guilt tripping people into, oh, OK, well, you just don't like black women then if you're not supporting this. And it, it's tiring. We're sick of it. Yeah, I think you nailed it 100 percent. Like, I, that's the reality. Like women like the women liked Marvel and Star Wars just fine. Was it a 50 50 breakdown? No. But then they decided, well, let's make it more for women. And then they lost the men. And so when you and they and, lost and some they, of the women too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And some of the women, right. The women that liked it the way it was, they lost. Yep. Them. So yep. now they're like, oh, let's just have more quips. Let's have a quip every 10 seconds. Even I was like, you could see it as like the Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one to like, even in like Endgame, I was like, can we stop with the jokes? I, I'm supposed right. to believe that the world, the entire universe is on the line here. You guys are cracking yep. jokes. Like, I don't think that that's very immersion breaking for me. Like, mm -hmm. th there's a little bit of banter between superheroes. I think that that's always fine. But it got to point, it got to the point where it was like nonstop jokes. And I was like, I when's the movie going to start? It's just, a st it's just cringe. And then they oh, but say nothing of what how they treated. They turned Thor into a, yeah. essentially a sex object, where yep. the butt of the joke in in Love and Thunder is that he was naked. If they would have right. done that to a woman character, the outrage would have been insane. Also, yep. by the way, remember when they made Thor fat and he yep. became the butt of the joke? And then even then, people were like, "Bro, you're, this is fat. people actually did the left did call it out as fat phobic." They're like, mm -hmm. what did you do to Thor? You made him fun. You made him fat and he's the butt of the joke now. It's like, well, you didn't need to do anything. What people like Thor when he was badass. Now he's yeah. dumb. They played up his dumbness. And like he's just a good, you know, he's just a guy who's like, oh, he's naked. You flick too hard. Ha oh. like, yeah, okay, it's funny, but I can't laugh at it because I know that if it was a yeah. woman, it would be the people would lose their minds. Yeah, I agree. It's just awkward. Like, I don't find anything that, that I didn't watch Love and Thunder, but even from the trailers and all that stuff with them showing that, oh, he's naked there. That's a that's just awkward and uncomfortable for me, it, given that situation. And I felt like it was degrading for the character. Um, and they like you said, they would have never done that to one of the female characters. So I just feel like what they've been doing with Thor in general is is degrading the character from multiple angles there with sexualizing him in a very awkward uncomfortable way uh, and then with the making him the butt of all the jokes and taking a character who's supposed to be powerful and a deity uh, to just comical comic relief and, well they took it from it. a guy who knew who he was and was strong and confident and then the mm -hmm. last three movies that they put out he was literally finding himself in all of the right. movies it was yeah. like dude like you can't have one strong, confident man in the movie. Like I guess like Tony Stark was, um, and always was up until the end, but like they took Thor who always knew who he was and was always confident. And there was suddenly he's like, Oh, Thor's finding himself again for the third movie in a row. And it's just, I don't, I don't love it. <laughs>